If you are a fan of the channel, you will most likely immediately recognize this machine here. This is my Dishonored case mod that I built for QuakeCon 2018. And while it is an absolutely beautiful machine with a full custom water loop in it, I've never actually overclocked this box. That changes today. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like I said, I have never given this machine the proper overclock it deserves. So when Patriot reached out to me and asked me to review their brand new SteelSeries Viper gaming memory, which overclocks all the way to 4,400 megahertz, I figured what better opportunity to actually run this thing through its paces. A quick rundown on the hardware before we get started here. This is running an i7-8700K 6-core 12-threaded processor on an EVGA Z370 for the Win motherboard. The original set of memory that I had in here has gone on to bigger and better things. Namely, they're running in one of my servers over there. It was a Kingston 16 gigabyte kit of 2400 DDR4. I had upgraded to a set of Patriot Viper RGB 3200 megahertz memory. However, if you recall that video, this really didn't push anywhere beyond 3200 megahertz. And so while it's a good performer and really, really good looking RGB RAM, it was never giving me the performance that I really wanted out of this kit. The only other upgrade to the system from the original video has actually been the graphics card. I swapped out the 1070 Ti that was originally in here for a GTX 1080. The 1080 was donated and I only had a water block, but I needed another air-cooled card for another project. So it got swapped out and honestly, I didn't film that project and I really should have because working on this machine, oh, it sucks. And that brings us current to today where I've swapped out the Patriot Viper RGB memory for the Patriot Viper SteelSeries memory. But what's the difference between these two kits? Well, this is running at 3200 megahertz and this is rated to run all the way up to 4400 megahertz. But I think the more important difference is the price. This kit of RGB memory at 3200 is running as low as about $143 as of late. And in fact, there's some other kits at 3200 megahertz speed running for as low as about $115. Meanwhile, the 4400 megahertz steel series memory is selling for 220. So the question we're going to attempt to answer today is, is there a noticeable performance difference between 3200 megahertz and 4400 megahertz? And is it worth the price premium? I really wanted to see what a difference high performance memory would make to the system, so I tested this in three different steps. Part the first, I ran the 8700K and the GTX 1080 at 100% stock speeds and the original 3200 MHz memory at its XMP profile, that is 3200 MHz at cast latency 16. Test number two, I ran this exact same 3200 MHz kit, but this time with pretty hefty overclocks on both the CPU and the GPU. The i7-8700K managed a 4.9 GHz overclock at 1.32 volts, and the GTX 1080 managed a 2138 MHz overclock over the 1948 stock speeds that I was getting. Test number three, I ran the exact same overclocks, but this time swapped out for the Patriot Steel Series memory. Spoiler alert though, I didn't quite make it all the way to 4400 MHz. Let's talk about this memory kit really quick and then we will dive into the results. Like I said, I was not able to get 4400 MHz memory speeds running out of this kit. That's not to say that it's not entirely possible, but remember overclocking depends on the quality of a number of components in your system, not just the memory itself. So in my case, with the Z370 for the Win motherboard and the i7-8700K, it just wasn't in the cards to get 4400 MHz out of this kit. However, I was still a little bit disappointed that even XMP Profile 1 wasn't able to post. On this kit, it is rated for 4133 MHz at 1.45 volts with cast latency 19, and setting that just resulted in a boot loop every single time. I did leave XMP Profile 1 enabled, however, I did have to step down my frequency from 4133 down to 4000 MHz, as well as loosening my timing slightly from cast latency 19 to CL20 to get this to actually post. However, at those settings, this was rock solid stable, not crashing even once during my testing. Starting with our synthetic results, Cinebench R15 ran a 1614 multi-thread score with the 3200 MHz kit and a 1654 with the 4000 MHz kit. That's an increase of about 2.5%. However, the single thread, we only gained a single point from 215 to 216 or a difference of about 0.4%. 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra shows a 0.7% increase and Time Spy shows a 1.5% increase, kind of splitting the difference between the single thread and multi-thread results from Cinebench. Before we get into the gaming results, I'm going to explain a little bit of my testing methodology and philosophy as far as how I approach reviews like this. I don't judge everything on a 100% even plane. Now, that might sound a little weird, but hear me out. Someone buying the 2133 MHz kit of memory is probably putting it into an entry-level system and buying all entry-level parts to go with it. However, someone buying a 4400 MHz kit of memory and spending the premium that goes with it 
likely isn't putting that to pair with a 2200G. They've got an 8700K or a 9900K. They've got a GTX 1080 or higher. I could test this kit at 1080p and probably show a wider disparity in the performance level between the 3200 megahertz kit and the 4400 megahertz kit. However, I don't think in reality, either of those kits of memory is going to be used that way. Someone who's buying this particular kit of memory is likely going to be gaming on a high resolution, high refresh rate monitor and playing all at ultra settings. And so that's how I do this testing. So with all that said, all of my testing today was ran on my BenQ EX3501R. It's a 100 Hertz, 1440p ultra wide monitor and something that would be easily paired with a system like this. Starting with CSGO, our frame averages jump up about 1.8%, which is pretty consistent. Sorry about the interruption here in the middle of this video. Uh, you're witnessing uh, a comedy of errors. So originally I really liked the way that video turned out. Unfortunately, pretty much after I started talking about the second benchmark, my audio cut out and uh, I lost all the rest of the footage. So we're refilming now, four days later. Coincidentally, it's Pi Day. So there you go. So as I said, let's start off our gaming benchmarks with CSGO. At our 4.9 GHz overclock on the 8700K with 3200 MHz memory, we saw an average of about 238 frames per second. Moving that to 4000 MHz only saw about a 1.8% increase to 242. However, that's pretty much within the margin of error, and that's bored out by the 1% and 0.1% lows that I got, which actually went down moving to 4000 MHz speeds. But like I said, with CSGO, that's pretty much within the margin of error, especially the low frame times, as those seem to be pretty inconsistent run to run. Doom showed me the results that I expected to see out of this kit across all the gaming titles. However, that really didn't pan out. What I got out of Doom was about a 7.8% increase from 156 frames per second to 167. The 4000 MHz kit also flexed its muscles when it came to the 1% and 0.1% low frame rates, showing an increase of 10 and 12% respectively. Project Cars 2 showed similar gains, improving by about 5.8% in the average frame rates. The 1% lows raised by about 1.8% and the 0.1% actually dipped off a little bit. However, again, kind of like CSGO, your low frame times can be a little bit inconsistent depending on what you're doing in the game. And there's no pre-scripted things that you can run to get a solid benchmark. So if you go off the road or your CPU has to work a little bit harder, your frame times can drop off a little bit. And then there's Hitman, the 2016 reboot of the franchise. And this one left me scratching my head a little bit as I really can't explain why I got the results that I got. However, the results were repeatable. In between each test, I actually flashed the BIOS and reset my overclock settings, both on the CPU and on the memory. And I got the same exact results every single time. At 4.9 gigahertz with 3200 megahertz memory, we saw an average frame rate of about 80 FPS with a low of 54. Doing nothing but overclocking the memory to 4000 megahertz, we saw the average frame rates jump up 52%, with the 1% lows jumping up a solid 14% in their own right. Now again, I can't explain these results and I highly doubt the memory was to blame. It could be a bug in the game, it could be a setting that I missed, but again, I reset the BIOS and verified my game settings before each and every test multiple times in this case because the results were not what I expected. So if you want the best overall Hitman 2016 experience, upgrade to 4000 megahertz memory. And that is gonna wrap up our testing for today. So like I said, not the most comprehensive list of games I've ever tested, but some interesting results nonetheless. So the Patriot Viper Steel Series 4400 megahertz memory kit, what do I think about it? I think this is a remarkably good kit. Even if I couldn't quite get the 4400 megahertz out of this on my hardware, 4000 megahertz was still remarkably stable and definitely a recommend from me. However, I don't recommend this memory kit for everyone. This really is kind of a niche overclocking product for people who have overclockable i5, i7, or i9 processors. I would even hesitate recommending this for AMD users to go out and buy, simply because the memory controllers, even on the 2700X, don't allow you to hit 4000 megahertz on the regular. So if you are an overclocker seeking that extra 5%, absolutely, I recommend picking up this kit. If you're anyone else, honestly, 3200 megahertz is probably fine. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Let me know down in the comments, what overclocks are you running on your hardware and could you benefit from a 4400 megahertz kit like this? Standard outro, you got it. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to Craft Computing on the way down there. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you're interested in picking up anything you saw on the show today, make sure to click the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. If you are interested in financially backing the channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon, where a $1 donation gets you access to my exclusive Discord server. You can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, my once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. That really is a good